Good early morning, everyone, and welcome to another movie classroom for every movie has a lesson. My name is Don Shanahan, and I write everymoviehasalesson.com. Um, my specialty is to do movie reviews with kind of a teacher's eye in mind, because in my eyes, in my opinion, just like the title says, every movie can teach a lesson. We've got the latest from Denzel Washington. Let me go right on and tell you all about The Equalizer. Alright, folks, The Equalizer is a movie remake of a old CBS TV show from the 1980s. I don't know much about it. It was before my time. Uh, but it's kind of about a former CIA operative turned kind of helpful Good Samaritan and vigilante um, solving different cases, kind of mixing detective and spy things together. Um, Denzel Washington uh, reunites with his uh, training day director, Antoine Fuqua, uh, for The Equalizer, a film version of that old TV show and kind of done more of a, a feature film size kind of thing than something episodic like television. Uh, Denzel plays kind of that same kind of idea. The... Um, Kind of the, the older guy, kind of in the, you know, unassuming guy you see at work who just happens to, in behind the scenes, kind of right wrongs in the community. The film takes place in his films in Boston. Um, he kind of is that, you know, good-hearted guy, but you can tell he's got a troubled past. Um, what tangles him up here um, is when he crosses the Russian mob, um, helping out a um, an escort played by Chloe Grace Moretz. And um, once he does that, he, he kind of... Uh, pokes the bear in the hornet's nest of uh, a whole wealth of people who are kind of out to find out what's this guy about, and they find out that he can kind of talk the talk and walk the walk and bite the bite. Um, he's got that ability to, as a former co covert operative kind of guy, we kind of, do, that's the fun part about it, we don't know all of his skills and all of his history, just things are suggested in this movie of where he comes from and what he's done and what sins are there. Um, but Denzel, as usual, is um, one of the, in my opinion, he's always kind of been the best actor working in Hollywood today. Um, I know he doesn't make uh, Oscar nominated material just about every time, but he's pretty darn close. Um, you know, because he'll take his days off with things like Two Guns, but this is definitely kind of a. Um, more of an action movie that kind of can maybe become a bit of a paycheck movie, but this is a good one. Uh, this is an intense, good, badass movie. Great action, uh, great slow burn intensity. Um, I like that they kind of don't tip their entire hand, um, and, re and they do a really good job of showing off um, just what Denzel can do. And surprisingly enough, the man is 59 years old, uh, still doing what he can do uh, compared to guys like Liam Neeson who kind of have to gruffly get their way through this stuff. Before I get to lessons, let me just tell you my review. The Equalizer is four stars out of five. Uh, like I said, great little action movie. This is the kind of dark, good, fun movie that fall season was meant for. Let's hop over to the left. Okay, folks, lesson number one and lesson number two kind of are two halves of where um, this main character, Robert McCall, played by Denzel Washington, comes from. And part of it is uh, both have to do with help. One of them is this first one here, and that is the help. That is seen by you and others. Um, the unassuming character that uh, Denzel plays on the outside, um, he does all kinds of good deeds in plain sight. He's that encouraging, supportive voice to his co-workers and neighbors and friends. He's a guy of courtesy and chivalry, and he, he carries himself as a guy who, you know, likes being a supporting role, but still leads by example and can and knows where his help can be. Um, he rightfully knows that people kind of still have to help themselves before he can kind of intervene, whether he intervenes just as a nice guy way, or if he intervenes in that butt-kicking Denzel Washington kind of way. But um, half of it is he does realize that people have to kind of help themselves, and that sometimes the way you have to do that is just public acts, and, and that's one half to it. The second half is lesson two. The second way he kind of does it, and I think it's the more powerful way, and it's kind of the you know the kind of the cool thing in the movie, and that is the invisible. Let me kind of check my spelling there. Is the invisible and unseen? Mm. Come on, you. There we go. The invisible and unseen help in our lives. The other half of what makes Robert McCall uh, the guy that he is and is the extraordinary range 
between his unseen acts of kindness and his unseen equal acts of vengeance that he does in the name of others. Now he does the nice guy versions and he does the not so nice guy versions. But um, he's not. And but at the same time, he does these unseen in the way where he does not want recognition. Um, doesn't wait around for a thank you. He just kind of wants to right the wrong, writes the right the wrongs that he sees, even kind of the messy ones. So. Um, this kind of speaks to the bigger picture of, you know, the power out there of the strangers that, that help us out, the, the anonymous donors, the people who pay it forward in a, in a line or a situation, the, the, you know, the people that kind of, um, you know, think of karma in mind about that, or, the, or just the typical random acts of kindness from strangers that are just maybe not as commonly committed by people in this world as we hope they would be. But uh, we have a guy who does it with, you know, <laughs> gusto is in terms of an understatement with that. Let's get to the third lesson, which is easy and simple, but you uh, can kind of see where this is going. Lesson number three It's kind of a, a simple way to finish this. Um, I don't want to take a lesson that talks to kind of the, the dark secrets and sins of the past of a very regretful and remorseful widower character that we have here, because not all of that... Um, not all of that uh, side of the story is told for Denzel's character, so I wanted to kind of do something that we still can see, and maybe it goes a little bit towards um, the root of where he kind of gets lesson one and lesson two. So that is, and let me see if I can fit this big word here. I want to try to say sentimentality, and it doesn't fit, so ah, here we go. Going to the next line and messing around. Stay with me, folks. Sentimentality. Ooh, getting messy. Man, I tell you, the fun of one take of doing this. Sentimentality is not a weakness. The Russian mobsters that he kind of pokes and gets, you know, involved with for this, you know, this um, uh, kind of quest that he's on a bit for to kind of right the wrongs, um, they don't care about anything, they value money and nothing much more. Um, they kind of live for nothing outside of stature and pushing people around, but... That's the thing. Robert has an enormous sentimental heart to do what he does for others. Um, it's that heart that he kind of keeps, whether it's maybe from his, you know, the love of his wife or the things that he sees and the goodness he sees in other people, or maybe even from the help that he gives. Um, but it's that heart that saves him from really losing himself to his dark past and his violent actions. Uh, sentimentality for this guy is a motivator, and um, he knows he has the skills to help and. I think you know, when you step back, it's kind of what more do you want in a person? I think, I think we want people to be sentimental. Even the guys that kind of, you know, pull the trigger or, or <laughs> you know, wield the weapons. I think we even want them to have a heart to know that they're putting they're putting their actions, brutal or not, um, in the right place and for the right reasons, or with kind of heart and mind. I know that maybe kind of doesn't match, but that's kind of where this is uh, pointing to. Once again, the equalizer is a, a, a lot of fun. Good dark, uh, good dark, slow boil, great intensity kind of movie. Um, I really think it's out there kind of as better than the typical things you've been seeing lately from maybe Liam Neeson, who seems to almost kind of play this same character uh, every single time lately. I think Denzel doesn't play it that often, which means when he does, it's really, really good. Um, and it's definitely way better than the repetitive factory of Jason Statham revenge movies, which are just the same movie every single time. Um, this one has just a little bit more greater purpose to it, I, because it doesn't tip its entire hand, it has kind of a, um, a, a, a more um, thoughtful quality to it, even though it still is kind of a rough, tough, hard R movie. Um, still, highly recommended, go seek it out, um, nice little film for you. Uh, as we wrap up, once again, don't forget my website, www.everymoviehasalesson Dot com. You'll see all of my reviews, editorials, previews, and etc. on there. I'm very excited to announce I uh, have earned press credentials at the gold level for the upcoming Chicago International Film Festival. It's the, its its 50th year. I hope to bring you guys um, some uh, great content from that in the month of October. I know we're also getting more and more into the fall here, and those Oscar contenders are starting to show up, and even some of them come early at the festival. Um, being that I'm writing this, uh, the festival for, as a member of the press, I, I can't publish full reviews for you until the, the, 
the movies open nationally, which could be a month or two towards November and December. But I'll do my best to kind of tip a few things your way and give you guys some capsule looks at some stuff. But stay tuned. It's going to be a great month.